As power crews across the region respond to Hurricane Michael, JEA went to work answering calls for help. Well, soon Jacksonville voters will get to weigh in on the municipal utility. Councilman John Cressenbenny explaining why he pushed and succeeded at getting an issue on the ballot regarding any sale of JEA. Plus, it continues to be a crisis. Violent crime in Jacksonville. Anybody that experiences a violent crime, uh, we feel for them and we don't want that to happen. You know, it does have to be a long-term strategy that, that is in place beyond one sheriff, beyond one mayor, beyond one state attorney. The community has to really get behind, you know, th this idea and these strategies of investing in young people. The state attorney along with the sheriff and the mayor explaining why they all believe there is a very specific target and how they hope to deal with the gang issue on This Week in Jacksonville. Looking forward to bringing you those interviews in a moment. City Councilman John Crescent-Benny joins us for our first segment today. Uh, you chaired this special committee that we saw in the winter and the spring months that was uh, specific to the sale of JEA or potential sale. Uh, that led to what people in Duval County are going to see on the ballot. So thank you for joining us. And maybe explain what this what the straw poll is that they'll see if they vote sure, in Duval thanks, County. Thanks for having me today. So on the November 6th ballot, probably the last item on most people's ballot will be a straw ballot question. It's non-binding. The city council uh, approved legislation that I introduced to put it on the ballot. And it basically asks a very simple question. At present, uh, if the JEA board of directors were to decide to sell 10% or more of the JEA, that decision would come to the council for final approval. The straw ballot question asks, should the council decision then come to the voters for final okay. approval. So it's a yes or no answer. Uh, if you think that the voters, who I believe are the owners of JEA, uh, should have a, a voice in that final decision, you'd vote yes. If you're okay with the city council making that final decision, you'd vote no. And this is really kind of how it came up because you said that in exploring this, city council has the final answer right now on whether or not a Correct. sale would happen. In, the, in, the, in our s charter, which is our constitution for the city, there's a whole section in there that deals with JEA and the provision in there currently states that if the board made a decision to sell, it would come to the council and the council by a majority vote, 10 out of, my, 10 out of the 19, would be the final uh, say on any sale up or down. So what I propose, I thought that was, I've always believed that uh, I was a shareholder in JEA as a customer and a resident of Duval County. And, you know, this is a conversation that came up in 2007. It came up again in 2012. And I've been an advocate for over 10 years that if any decision was ever to be made about JEA, it should be made by the voters. Uh, I didn't learn until this year that there was charter language that kind of didn't allow for that. So uh, this is an attempt to try to get something inserted into the charter. This straw ballot, if it comes back favorably, I have other legislation that's pending to actually change the charter to match up with the straw ballot if the voters approve it. So maybe help folks understand why we're not just talking about that second piece of legislation. Uh, this is a non-binding, you know, it's like the straw ballot or straw, but why is that important to voters and why should they really weigh in right now, regardless of what happens down the line? Uh, well, I think what's happened this year, this five or six month conversation that occurred yeah. about uh, selling JEA and then our committee kind of morphed into what's the future of JEA. It grew legs much longer than it has in the past and I just think if I, I, there's, there's a lot of people believe that this conversation is going to come back up again perhaps next year and I just think we need a mechanism in place to at least offer the voters the opportunity to weigh in on whether they want a decision in the future if in fact this conversation does occur again and if in fact a decision is made at some point by the JEA and or the yeah. council to sell a portion or all of the utilities. Let's take a, a look at some of the video of JEA crews out there. They are really put to the test when we have severe weather. And of course, as we know this week, uh, Hurricane Michael and the Panhandle, we know the men and women locally jump into action to try and help our neighbors. JEA spokesperson told me that Tallahassee specifically asked for help. And so that's where recovery crews would go. Just uh, tell me your opinion here. Would selling JEA only have bad outcomes both for those workers and for those you have in mind, the, the people who are the shareholders, if you will, of our energy utility? Well, this isn't a referendum about should we sell or not sell. This is just a referendum about whether you want to have an opportunity to participate in that conversation right. at some future date. I could not comment on, uh, you know, 
what a potential sale could look like. I mean, if somebody offered the city a billion dollars from JEA, I'd say, heck no, it's worth way more than that. If somebody was out of their mind and offered us a trillion dollars, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's something we would need to look at. But the terms of that sale, if in fact this conversation happens again, would be put before the voters and each one of them could make the decision is it the right thing to do or should yeah. we keep the utility? Yeah. Uh, in the committee process this year, I've lived here in Jacksonville since 1965. I learned probably more about JEA <laughs> during this committee process than I've known as a citizen, as a two-term uh, member on the city council. It's a fantastic organization. They do so much more than provide reliable electric water and sewer service to customers. They are truly a community partner in every sense of the word. They make cash contributions to our budget, the city's budget each year. They've helped us buy preservation property to the tune of $20 million. They've spent $53 million on improving the infrastructure at what used to be Cecil Field, which is now a, uh, a commerce center. Uh, and the list just goes on and on. Yeah. Employees donating thousands of hours each year to various volunteer projects. They have a unique ability to, um, to uh, apply for FEMA grants. So if we do have a storm that damages their infrastructure, yeah. I think, I think we, they sustained about $40 million worth of damage in the past two storms. They can get 87.5% reimbursement from FEMA. A private utility can't do that. So, so where does the private utility get that money from? The rate payers. Well, one of the things that I, we certainly saw, and we're going to wrap up here, I, I appreciate your time, but we certainly saw that the community said, wait a second, We've got a lot of pride in JEA and that they are a community partner. So Absolutely. appreciate that and explaining what's on the ballot for folks because uh, November 6th is going to be here before we know it and uh, early voting as well. Thank you so much. All Council. right. Well, thank you for having me. So public safety, a big concern. And I want you to see our interview with the top leaders in the area, the mayor, the sheriff, and the state attorney next on This Week in Jacksonville. It's easy to beat the heat when you become an energy-saving expert with the FPL mobile app and the online home energy survey. Go to fpl.com slash beat the heat to see how you could save up to $300 a year. As a professional lobbyist, Wyman Duggan wrote the book on helping special interests. Duggan wants to eliminate our elected school board. He wants politicians to choose the members, appointments that can benefit contributors and insiders. And Duggan worked to sell JEA to a foreign company. Residents pay higher rates, and the city loses $54 million a year in revenue. We don't need another lobbyist in Tallahassee. Let's close the book on Wyman Duggan. Tired of being a number? At 121 Financial Credit Union, you are our member, an owner, not a number. Since 1935, hardworking families and businesses have trusted us with their banking because we offer lower rates on loans, higher yields on savings and checking accounts. We help our members where it matters, at home in our community. You are our friend, our neighbor, and we are your biggest fan. Experience our friendly and personal service today. Federally insured by the NCUA. I'm Kelsey Grammer. My dad was gunned down at his home at the age of 38. Six years later, my sister Karen was brutally raped and murdered. She was 18. When my father's killer was released, I found out through the National Enquirer. It seemed like a cruel joke. In my sister's case, I have been allowed a voice in the parole hearings of her killers, but that's not always true in Florida. Amendment 6 gives crime victims and their families a voice in the process and the equal rights they deserve. Please vote yes on Amendment 6. Florida's newest cash crop means thousands of jobs for you. Medical marijuana is doing well. It's a booming industry. So, what's it take to land a job in this budding business? We really are going to be one of the largest employers. News 4 Jacks goes straight to the source. Who they're hiring. What are the job opportunities for Floridians? And why employees can expect to make more money. People can command up to $180,000 a year. And yes, we'll reveal if they drug test. Budding business, Monday at 515 on News 4 Jacks. It's easy to beat the heat when you become an energy-saving expert with the FPL mobile app and the online home energy survey. Go to fpl.com slash beat the heat to see how you could save up to $300 a year. Ladies, tell me your powers. I can read minds. I can freeze time. I can move stuff with my mind. 
Impressive. Kara. Well, I can fly. Of course. Uh, also, I'm crazy strong. Naturally. My eyes shoot laser beams. Oh, come on. I can hear stuff from miles away. Okay, we get it. Um, pretty much bulletproof. Might be here for a while. I've Sundays are for the CW. I can reverse time by time You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. You know, public safety is job one. That's the message that we've heard from time to time, and it shouldn't be unexpected. doesn't seem unusual. What is unusual presents itself in meeting with the trio of top elected leaders in Jacksonville. Each of them wanted to talk about that top priority and where they believe the real problem of violent crime in Jacksonville sits. The three of us are sitting here because we want the public to know that while you're seeing this in a very public setting right now, this is what happens on a regular basis. We collaborate, we are working together, we are aligned on solving the violent crime issue. Uh, we've invested resources on the enforcement side, on the prevention side, the intervention side. We've invested dollars in juvenile diversion and are going to continue to do that. But we also want people to know that there's almost 900,000 people that live in Jacksonville. There are not 900,000 criminals, there aren't 100,000 criminals, there aren't 50,000 criminals. It's a very small percentage of folks committing most of these violent acts. Random acts of violence are not just happening all over our city on any given night. That said, where it's happening, largely gangs, we are working and collaborating together to solve it. So you, you say gangs, and Sheriff, this is something that we've heard from you over the last few years. Uh, maybe how many gangs or how many people are involved here? Because we've heard between 30 and then even more recently up to 50 gangs in Jacksonville. Where does that stand? So, it, you know, and it fluctuates. They come and go. The structure is not what it was years ago where there's a Bloods and a Crips and they're there forever. Um, they intermingle amongst themselves. Really, at the end of the day, think of it this way. You have about 1% of our population, you know, maybe 800 people. 800 people whose names we know, by the way, uh, that are involved in this kind of activity. So it, while it seems like a, a huge issue, and it is, it's very complex, it's not something that, you know, you, you can't work on and get your hands around. Uh, those 800 people are involved in, in, in the violence that the mayor talked about, typically victimizing themselves over and over and over again, which drives up murder counts, drives up violent crime rates. Uh, and again, we've been grappling with that for several years now. Obviously, our office is charged with prosecution of people who violate the law. Um, we've been think, trying to approach our job in a broader sense. Obviously, public safety, we're charged with that as well. So prosecuting one case, multiple cases at a time um, is, is, our, or is our job. But if we can actually use our tools to prevent crime, then we want to do that. So that's why we've been, um, long before today, in discussions with one another and collaborating about, I have this set of tools, you have these set of tools, you have these um, set of tools, and how can we work together um, to address a complicated problem in a, co in a comprehensive way. Yeah, so give me an example of some of the tools that your office can use in this equation of trying to solve this. So when I came in a year and a half ago, um, this was a priority. Addressing this was a priority. And obviously I don't have uniformed police officers who can go on, out on the street and um, arrest folks. But we have a lot of tools in our Florida statutes available to us, and we wanted to make sure that we were being precise in what we were doing. So similar to um, the sheriff's office dedicating resources um, to target offenders who are committing this violence, we wanted to do the same. So we stood up a targeted prosecution unit. We invested um, some of our best talent in that unit, and it complements the violent crime impact team and the work of the gang unit at JSO. They are embedded with them. We are sharing communication with them. Um, and I, I hear, I understand that it's um, enhancing what, what they can do. I thought if they know who these known offenders are, our office should as well. Um, the city has invested uh, recently, um, given us resources to develop something called an arrest alert system. So that in the next year, once we build this out, when one of these known offenders is picked up, our targeted prosecutors will get something on their phone as soon as they do, which will inform our debriefing, it will inform our bond recommendations, it will inform who shows up at first appearance, um, and hopefully it will have an impact. So. The city's investing in technologies that we are saying we could benefit from, um, and we're working collaboratively with the sheriff's office in trying to be precise in um, addressing this problem. So for any of you, uh, again, this is, it's not the first time that we've heard there's a gang issue here, but Mayor, I, I hear maybe some, um, I don't know, frustration in your voice saying, hey, don't misunderstand, it's not happening everywhere, it's 
it's a sliver of this population, I think you've heard it called subculture by the sheriff, that is committing these crimes. So what are we doing, what are you all doing to try and fix that or solve that or keep people safe? Well, I mean, the first, the frustration is that public safety is the top priority of government at every level. I believe that philosophically and deeply, which is why we're investing so heavily in tools. Anybody that experiences a violent crime, uh, we feel for them and we don't want that to happen. Um, specific to the gang-related stuff, again, uh, it is many times they're victimizing amongst themselves, uh, but we're focused on it. Resources to arrest them, prosecute them, but then also resources. Who, who are the young people, the five, six, seven, eight year olds that are exposed to this gang culture? Because if we don't get to them, they're next. That's why we uh, reformed the way we serve kids and created the K Kids Hope Alliance. That's why we just, uh, within the last few weeks, got a federal grant, $1.5 million federal grant for juvenile justice diversion programs, try to set some of these young people on the right road. Uh, it's why we're investing heavily in the prevention and the intervention, as well as the 180 police officers that we funded. In the end, we have to get to the young people that are experiencing this. The state attorney has alerted me to a group called, a group called Cure Violence that treats violence like a disease, like an epidemic. We're bringing them in uh, in the next few weeks to do an assessment. From that assessment, we will learn how to treat violence like a disease, like medical professionals do. What do you do with the disease? You disrupt it. We, go, we will go into communities and work to disrupt this violence. You know, I, I can hear somebody watching right now or reading this story online and saying, they're really talking about a specific part of town. But what I've done in terms of research, I understand that there are gangs east side, west side, north side. So it's not just one quadrant of the city or, or it's not that specific. Is that but, right? But Kent, if, even if someone believes that, in, in where bad guys are doing bad things, we're aligned. Arrest, prosecute. But hear me, there are young kids at no fault of their own that are exposed to this gang culture. And regardless of what part of town, what neighborhood, what zip code you live in, we all have a responsibility to the children of this city. Yeah. So the video that I just watched here, obviously there's a lot of young people who are the gang members. As I understand it, the gang members really kind of range between that like 15 and 25, somewhere in that 10 year span there. That's right. Do you agree with that, that we need to be attacking the problem by getting to kids before they even consider gang is how I'm going to find family or connection in my community? So that that's the only long view there is to get ahead of this issue once and for all. You, you For us, I mean, we're obviously focused on tonight and tomorrow night and this weekend. And when you talk about enforcement strategies and things to, you know, to keep communities safe and to be proactive, you know, against current gang members, that type of stuff, responsive to, you know, some of the investigative things that we have to do, um, all that's happening every day. But, but we're gonna to continue to treat those symptoms if you think of those things as symptoms. We're gonna to continue to treat that unless we can get to the root causes of it. Yeah. So, so you've gotta get down involved in the lives of these young people. You absolutely have to. Uh, or as Melissa said earlier, you know, it's, a, it's you, you, we're gonna arrest one, there's another one in the batter's box ready to go. Uh, and and you, you can't do that. I mean, obviously you're doing the same things over and over again without getting any results. So you've gotta look long term at getting involved, as the mayor said, in the lives of young people. Uh, in, in the heavy investment there. People realizing that that is an investment. You may not see the benefit of that this weekend, but you will 10 years from now. You will five years from now, you know, in the lives of, of some of these young people. That's what this is about. And how do the leaders get that message to spread in the community? Maybe more importantly, how do they establish credibility in communicating that message? Our conversation continues on This Week in Jacksonville. It isn't just about vision, it's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. A home is an investment for the long term, and your home's foundation is the key to protecting that investment. For wall cracks, settling, water problems, or an unsealed crawl space, call Alpha Foundations for a solution that delivers comfort and security for years to come. Political insider Tracy Polson says she stands with Florida. Her record shows something different. Polson actually stands with out-of-state donors, 
pouring tens of thousands of dollars into her campaign. From Washington to New York, Chicago to San Francisco, they fund Paulson because she supports their extreme values, not ours. Socialized health care, job-killing taxes, and big government education that puts unions ahead of students. Tracy Paulson, she's with them, not us. Have you heard the news? RV World at Jacksonville is now open. Shop the large selection of new and used RVs at the lowest prices. Buy a new travel trailer today for as little as $99 per month. Or take home a new fifth wheel for only $210 a month. RV World in Jacksonville is your one-stop location for RV sales, financing service, and so much more. All in a newly remodeled building. Your RV World in Jacksonville is now open. Check out the big savings today. Boss, have you seen the latest report with the effects of chewing tobacco? Uh, let me see. Yuck! Nobody wants to see that. Watson, you know how I do this job. I ignore the consequences. Even the nearly 6 million people worldwide dying yearly from smoking and chewing tobacco? I said ignore, Watson. What are you, a dummy? Tobacco is no joke. Chewing tobacco leads to oral cancers. Learn more at thefactsnow.com. At Morgan & Morgan, we just celebrated 30 years of service to you. As a mother of four and grandmother to four boys, I'm still waiting for that granddaughter. My focus has always been on your family. An accident can impact so much in a family's life. Now there are bills to pay and an uncertain future. Injuries or the death of a loved one can suddenly change life as we once knew it. Thank you for trusting our family to be here for your family all these years. Morgan & Morgan, for the people.com. I see Rick Scott wearing that Navy hat everywhere he goes. Let me tell you what he did to veterans. His hospital company stole millions, defrauding the military's health care program. Scott pled the fifth and walked away with a fortune. And today, he's worth over 200 million bucks. But veterans like me, we got cheated. Governor, this hat represents what the Navy stands for, honor and integrity. My question for you, sir, where's yours? Vote vets at SMP are responsible for the content of this ad. And picking up our conversation with the city leaders about the gang issue in Jacksonville. Sheriff Mike Williams says Jacksonville police can't make the impact on gangs alone, especially when it comes to delivering the message that there is a choice for young people to reject gangs. That's why we've got to have the support of the community in helping us deliver, you know, a variety of messages. Uh, and, and we do that, you know, every day. You know, we're knocking on these doors of these gang members and, hey, here's what you're exposed to. Not only, in, not only are... You know, you looking at the potential of being gunned down in the street, you know, but if we catch you and we're working hard on catching you every day, you're going to spend the rest of your life in prison. And so, you know, here's some options for you to think about. So we're out there trying to do that work every day, but you're right, it's much more effective to have someone from that community. And we have them. We have partners that do that to deliver that message. And so, you know, again, it's a, it's, it just speaks to the underlying importance of having the community engaged in what we do. Yeah. And look, Kent, I mean, people all over Jacksonville from all different neighborhoods, all different zip codes, all different backgrounds are facing any number of issues on any given day, uh, whether it be services the city can provide or whether it be law enforcement issues, investing in kids, uh, regardless of background. And the three of us are aligned in making sure that we're serving all of the people of Jacksonville. What, but can you ask, uh, let me just speak to about cr having credibility right. with um, a, a population who is, that is suffering. Um, cure violence, one of the things they do is they bring what's called the credible messenger and the violence interrupter. Um, so hopefully the three of us and the folks we work with um, can deliver a message, but there, there is science that suggests that people who actually have been gang involved themselves, justice involved themselves, can deliver that message perhaps more effectively. So the sheriff's office has already been implementing those strategies for some time. And um, cure violence, the idea would be it would be expanded. Um, their efforts would be expanded. Yeah, so think about cure violence again, treating it like a disease, like an epidemic, like the medical community would with physicians and doctors. These violence disruptors are like physicians that have real life experience in this gang environment. Mayor, when you talked about uh, recrafting, delivering services to the, the young people, and you, it's called Kids Hope Alliance, because you know, hope is an important part of what we're trying to offer to these young people so they don't go toward a gang or, or other uh, bad actions. 
What's your level of confidence and hope that this problem will be solved by the actions you're trying to take now? You, you got to remain vigilant. You can't be, you can't be uh, complacent. And that's what I, we have demonstrated together. That's what I've demonstrated for three years now. The people of Jacksonville know me. They know this issue is important to me. And they know that I am going to, through good, smart knowledge and data, invest with great care in the young people of this city. If you look historically around the country, now every city's different. And, and so cracking the code here in Jacksonville will look a little different than it did in Boston, than it's done in Los Angeles or New York. But it's been done. So, you know, the fact that people say hey, there's nothing you can do about that is not true. Uh, and, and we're doing, you know, again, in terms of uh, best practices around the country, I, I, you know, I hear something new from Melissa every other week um, that she's found somewhere and it's fantastic. So, That's true. I do too. It's true. And uh, so, but again, we've got to incorporate the right mix of those things here to make it work, but, and, and we will. Yeah. Do you feel that way? You'll find a way to make this work and solve this? So I am incredibly positive. Um, despite the fact that this is a problem, you've got folks who are committed to solving it. Um, so I, I, I am optimistic. Um, I think when we talk about alignment, it's not just about um, also take the approach it one way, which is only through suppression. Um, it's recognizing that the approach needs to be, um, I keep saying multifaceted, but truly multifaceted. And, and just the fact in the way that we are communicating and sharing information has already led to results, um, so it matters. This and people should take comfort, I think, in that. This hasn't always happened in, this, in our city. It has with us, but historically there has not been alignment with these, the three LS that occupy these offices. Yeah. You heard me talking there. I asked each of those leaders how confident they are that they can solve the problem of violent crime. So collectively, what they told me is that they believe it will change as soon as the voices for good in the affected communities drown out the negative voices from the gangs. They also want a sustainable change, one that lasts well beyond their times in office. All right, so what do you know about uh, Athena International? Jacksonville is hosting the National Leadership Awards, and we're talking with the founder of Athena and their award recipient, Martha Mertz, Bonnie Carroll, both joining us next week. And this week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at this time. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4 and the CW17, and always online at news4jax.com. People in Northeast Florida and South Georgia get their news from News 4 Jax than anywhere else.